And since he still had uh, Jack under contract for another two days, he said, oh, let's, let's go out and make another movie. And not only did he make another movie, he made another two movies. Oh, wow. So this is what, this is what, we're, we're, what we're dealing with here. I mean, you can imagine the quality right. you know, that, that came out of uh, filmmaking of that style. Uh, but anyway, so I was a teenage wear skunk uh, because um, you know, I was working with such a small budget, too, that sort of one way to get around that is like, well, let's make this as if, you know, we're paying homage to movies that were made in this way, Mm -hmm. you know, so where, you know, where it's lacking in production value almost seems intentional because the movies that were homaging exactly were lacking in production. value. Right, right. You know, Um, so, yeah. Wow, that's great. And so um, you how long did it take you to make the film? Um, well, it's, a the entire process of film. I mean, I started this script, um, almost 10 years ago, which isn't to say I've been working on it for 10 years, but I mean, I literally wrote, you know, the first 40 pages or so about 10 years ago and then just sort of scrapped it, Mm -hmm. um, and would come back to it occasionally over the years. But, um, you know, so from, from inception and, you know, the screenwriting and then there's the fundraising and the pre-production and, you know, I'm still I'm still in the process of making this movie. Like, I, there's some there's some mistakes in the credits that I have to go back and fix. And, oh and no! Go, you know, I mean, there, you know, it's it's kind of never ending. But uh, it's been about a the the real meat and potatoes of it. It's been about two years. Wow. I would say the whole thing. But production itself, uh, the shoot lasted about three weeks. Um, but we were we were you know things things that we missed or you know ideas I had later. You know, for example, there's a movie within the movie where there's a, a scene where uh, two of the main characters are actually at a movie theater watching a movie. Mm-hmm. And in an early edit of of uh, Where Skunk, it just seemed weird that we never saw what they were watching. You know, you just see them sitting there and it just it just felt weird. So I thought like, oh, maybe, I, you know, maybe I'll write some little, you know, we'll mini make it like, movie. Right. Yeah. So they're watching this old uh, black and white sci fi movie called It Came From Uranus. <laughs> And, I mean, this is here's like six months after we finished uh, principal photography on the movie. I was oh out goodness. shooting, you know, right. uh, shooting footage for it came from Uranus. You know? Right. But yeah, the the like I say, the the real the real gist of it took about three weeks to shoot. But then over the course of the next several months, we were, you know, picking up little things or adding things. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of all the little things that go into making a movie, you and I were talking off the air a little bit because, um, you know, I was just so stinking excited to have you in here. Um, and you were saying that you at one point were sort of a songwriter, musician I yourself, was. which I was. actually became kind of key for this movie. Uh, it did. Um, yeah, I was um, free. And this was before I, I moved to L.A. So this was around the seacoast. I was a singer songwriter. I called myself Tino Popstar. Tino Pop. Yeah, it was. It was That's supposed, a great name. You well, know, it was fun. When I first started writing songs, I was I, I didn't take myself seriously as a songwriter, and I was writing kind of joke songs. Right. Um, I'm and, getting that you have a sense of humor. Yeah, a Neil. little bit. A <laughs> little bit. Um, and so the the Tino Pop star name was sort of a play on the old uh, Brady Bunch episode with Johnny Bravo. Yes. Um, and then, but you know, I'd already sort of monikered myself that, and then as the music became, when I started taking it more seriously, when I was, you know, getting more into, like, Bob Dylan and Bruce Springsteen and Tom Waits and, like, singer songwriter people, I already had the name, you know, and so I was, it, the name doesn't doesn't quite fit what I was doing. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I was, I played around uh, the Seacoast uh, quite a bit as Tino Popstar, and then um, sort of retired that in my, in my late 20s, and I kind of I guess I just tired of it, realized it wasn't taking me anywhere or whatever, whatever, right, whatever led right. to the decision. And I, and I, uh, well, you had a movie to make, obviously I did. Yeah. I guess, I guess that's why. And yeah. So when it came time to, um, uh, the movies, it's, you know, as I alluded to earlier, it's a period movie. It's set in the, it's an undisclosed date, but in late fifties, early sixties kind of, right. Um, era. And, you know, I needed music, you know, um, and you can't, you know, when you're dealing with the kind of budget that I am, you can't just go and and uh, buy the rights to the platters or, or right. you know, what. Yeah, yeah. There's some pretty iconic music that came out of that exactly. era. <laughs> and, it's, and it's not cheap. And, you know, it's not it's you know, it's probably cheaper than the Rolling Stones, but it's still not. It's thousands right. and thousands of dollars. Um, so, yeah, I kind of uh, wasn't sure what to do. I didn't know if there were, you know, I looked into like kind of public domain stuff or if maybe there were some forgotten do du- do op group where I could get the stuff for free. And then right. ultimately it just sort of hit me. I was like, I, I 
do this. Like, this is inside <laughs> of me. I write songs. Like, why All don't of I a just... sudden, Tino just came back to you <laughs> yeah, in a ray like, of light. Yeah, like, what am I doing? Like, and, and it's great because I could write... I could write. I could target the song specifically to what was going on in the scene. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like for example, there's a there's a scene where there's two two couples sitting in a in a soda pop shop, and one of them is is a legit couple, and then the other one, the two have a crush each, on each other, mm-hmm. but they haven't expressed it yet. And so the couple is sitting there, and they're drinking one root beer float with the uh, with two straws. And the other couple, they both have their own root beer floats, and they're kind of sheepishly looking at each other and looking at the other couple. And and I needed music to play over that moment, and so I wrote a song called Root Beer Float about a boy who pines for a girl, and he wishes <laughs> that he was sharing a root beer float with her. Um, but, uh, you know, do up and, you know, that's I, – I was never the – you know, I was – on my best day, I might have been like a B minus <laughs> singer, and for the stuff I was doing, that was okay. But doo-wop, you know, they, this, they have very pretty voices, and there's harmonies, and I couldn't do that, you know. And so I, uh, um, another uh, local to 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 this area, uh, Zach Jones, who mm-hmm. I, I grew up with him. I actually he grew he was a little he was five or six years younger than me, but grew up literally right down the street. Like I grew up in a neighborhood where all you know the kids would all play outside, and mm-hmm. and he was one of them, and. Um, he uh, ha- he also lives in L.A., just completely separate of me. He just he's uh, out there pursuing music. And he when he heard I was making the movie, he reached out and said, hey, if you need any music for the movie, hit me up. And I remembered that. And I gave him a call and I told him, you know, this is this is what I need. Uh, would you like to be a part of it? And he and he and he did. And he was he was unbelievable. He was a miracle. Like I would literally I mean, I would write these songs and I would just take my attitude guitar and my horrible voice and just sing them into my iPhone and send him the files. And I would say, okay, make this sound like Little Anthony and the Imperials or whatever. Right. And, I, and yep. I'd, sa- I'd send him a, a sample song from, you know, Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers or something. And be like, make it sound like this. And he would, he played, he plays several instruments, but then also, um, you know, commissioned out, you know, for drums and horns. And he did all these harmonies and he would send me back these files that, you would think that you had a, like you would think you were listening to the oldie station like you it's it's unbelievable it's remarkable i'm really really excited for people to hear what zach was able to do with these songs like it sounds like just authentic 50s rock and roll doo up it such an amazing job and if you had seen cuts of this movie before the music was in there and cuts of this movie after it went from from a from a d minus to an a plus like it, it right. makes that much of a difference like you don't realize the little things like that that just make so much of a difference right and i think it's great that you got to keep it local too yeah yeah right yeah, so yeah. okay so people can check out this amazing movie tonight they can at the cinemagic correct right on lafayette road that's right it gets underway at 7 30 7 30 yeah. and uh there are there's still a few tickets left but they need to be per- you can't get them at the theater they have to be purchased through the website uh which is www.teenagewareskunk.com that's where skunk like werewolf w-e-r-e um but there's there's really only a few left. So if, you, if you're interested and you're listening to this, get online now and take care of that because they're going to be gone. Awesome. Well, Neil, thank you so much for being here in studio with My me. My pleasure. It's thank pretty you for amazing. Me. My goodness, look at this. You get the phones ringing off the hook. All right. We got some weather coming up for you next. It is 922 on Edge Radio.